Hey y'all, hey y'all, welcome in, welcome in. Uh, I had an overwhelming response to the last video I posted, just sharing some scripture and application to my life and how it has helped me in my walk and my growth in my relationship with the Lord and, um, and the changes in my mindset as a new believer. And so I feel obligated um, because of that response. And I thank you for those of you who, who reached out and, and were like, you know what, I was that someone that needed to hear that. I appreciate you for uh, encouraging me to continue to share my walk and, um, and the effects of scripture on my life. Uh, so I'm just gonna continue doing that regularly. And so I'll start with uh, today and sharing with you my revelations from this week and the scripture that I felt like was most useful to have in my quiver to, to be equipped to do his work. Um, so every week there's usually one word or one type of thought that stands out to me a little bit more than everything else that the spirit convicts me to work on. And this week it was the word patience. I struggle with patience. Um, I'm a go-getter, I'm an overachiever, and I like to get stuff done. <laughs> Anyone who works with me knows that, and so I struggle with patience, and so I was convicted to be slow in my speech and, and my actions and my reactions. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you think you're on a, a sinking ship, and then you feel the need to jump all the time and to take fate into your own hands uh, to see what you can do about your situation. Um, but recently I've been learning how to try leaning on my hope and my faith and trusting that God is in control. That's hard. <laughs> That's hard for me to be still. I struggle with that. Some of my friends I know struggle with that be still piece, but um, it's something that I'm working on. And so a lot of it comes from, from my mind, where my mindset's at. And um, one verse that has helped me with that is Colossians chapter three, verses one through two. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So that's huge for me because life is an expression of your thoughts, right? Your, your thoughts really are where your life starts. It, it starts with thoughts and then thoughts amount to actions and those actions breed habits and then your habits actually play into the character that defines how your life goes. Um, so if you fill your mind with truth, then the Holy Spirit can guide you into a life that's just filled with the, the fruit of the Spirit. So uh, another verse that has helped me is 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That, that's two pieces to that, that I really stand out to me. One is take captive every thought. So when a thought enters your mind, really sitting there and, and analyzing it a little bit, being patient with it a little bit, hold it captive and look at it and say, you know what, is my reaction to this thought in obedience to Christ or something else? So one of the many ways that Satan leads us away from the Lord and his way is promises for earthly riches. Instead of riches, only God can provide, right? So riches such as peace, love, self-control, happiness, they don't have dollar signs attributed to them. So one of the things I've noticed is if my decision to do something or not to do something is driven by a dollar sign, it's most likely the wrong decision and it's being led by temptation. And so I will pivot and re reset myself and realign a little bit. So. That's one thing that was helpful for me. Um, so decision making, I try to write it out now to kind of stop and slow down and be patient. I'll take captive every thought. I will decide if my desired action is rooted in temptation or righteousness. And then I'll identify how I'm defining the value of the desire that I'm trying to make a decision based on. Are you assigning a value to your desires with currency that is defined by man or a currency that's defined in scripture by God, like the fruit of the spirit and his expectations of you versus man's expectations and their perceptions of you. Um, so another useful piece of scripture is Psalm 37, four through five, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. That's huge for me. That's powerful because I was struggling with, 
trying to define my way versus his way, as opposed to looking at it in a perspective of aligning my way with his way. So you see, it's possible to have things that you desire if you're aligning your actions with his way, with his his desires for you and his purposes for you and, and whatever gift it is that he gives you, right? So it doesn't have to be a sacrifice uh, of your way to achieve God's purpose for you. Um, he already has that all planned out. It's just a matter of, of walking with him. So are you settling is another thing. Are you settling for in between dreams is what I call it. Some of my friends have been encouraging them through our dream series on Friday nights in TN Testimonial to skip the in-between dreams. Sometimes you feel like you gotta do something first before you can have what you really want with regard to uh, fulfilling your life and your purpose, right? So I gotta, I probably have to settle for this first before I can be here and truly be happy um, with whatever it is. But what, what you can, what you'll find is that maybe you're not trusting that God can handle the dream that you think is too big for him. Like, are you trusting that he could really make something legit happen for you? Like right now, that's right around the corner or are you settling for less? Are you settling for an in-between job or are you settling for an in-between relationship with somebody or a friend, uh, in-between friendship or an in-between fellowship or whatever it might be to get where you wanna be? Or are you really working on the now uh, for that, that bigger picture of your purpose? Um, so, and the other thing is like, are you working for an employer or are you working with people who encourage you to provide ways that, that provide you ways to work for God? That's a huge question. That's something that I had to, to sit back and look at last year and continue in that. Am I working for someone or am I working with someone who's on the, on the right path, you know? And so ultimately seeking out and acting on your gift of what you're supposed to be doing in glorification of God is really where you should be focused with everything that you do. So, you know, dreams for the future are an important thing. They're important for ambition, motivation to like do your thing, you know, um, to be renewed in your mind and spirit over the entire course of your life. You know, it's not just something, oh, I did it, I checked it off and, and I'm good now. No, it's like a continuous life process. Um, however, are you really planning to live a life that glorifies God eventually, or are you working to do it today? And this is something that um, my devotional helped me to identify this week on day nine, Matthew 6, 34, give your entire attention to do, excuse me, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Uh, so, you know, I'll read it from a different version. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So within the 24 hours that you have today, are you working to glorify God today? Because tomorrow is not really promised, right? So saying, hey, you know, I'm going to set up myself to where, you know, I can be righteous in the future or that I can do the right thing soon. Um, or are you really looking at ways that you can do right today and glorify him today in everything that you do, whether it's the dishes or the laundry or planning your next venture or whatever, you know? So he can work through you to achieve your wildest dreams. And it could be right around the corner. If you exercise patience, you be still. And if you really truly trust him to be in control, are you a sheep? Have you accepted that? If you look at Psalm 23, that, that really popular verse, do you, you say it, but do you really believe it? You know, are you trying to do, you do things your way in, in your control? You know, are you, do you feel like you really have everything figured out or are you really leaning on the spirit for that? So fill your mind with his truths so that you can hold negative thoughts captive and start living your dream life, seeing the beauty in today. And please join us on Fridays if the spirit moves you to dream your heart out. For 100 days, we're doing TN testimonial Friday nights, it's 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. My end back there is for Napa. I'm in California. And um, that's 10 p.m. Eastern Time, guys. <laughs> I'm my East Coast people and the people in between you, you're around nine o'clock. But check out my page for more information on that. It's on Zoom. I hope you all have a blessed week ahead of you. I hope that this scripture is tucked in your heart and that it, you can use it to battle all that negativity that's coming your way and, and move up to the next level of life.
Thank you all. Love you, love you, love you. And God bless.